Um, everybody may take your seat. Wow, it's amazing. I mean, first and foremost, I just want to thank God. I don't take this moment lightly whatsoever. Um, I want to thank God for my salvation. Um, thank you, Pastor, for allowing um, this privilege to share your pulpit, to be behind this pulpit, to preach the word. I um, also want to thank Brother Junior. Brother Junior couldn't be here, so let's keep him in prayer. He's um, going through some health issues right now. Um, so let's just keep him in prayer. Today is a prayer service, so let's make sure that we intercede for him. And also for, for Ryan. Ryan's feeling a little under the weather, so let's just keep him in prayer. So before I start, I just want to open up in a word of prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father God, I just come before you, Father God. Grateful and thankful, Father God, Jesus and I just pray, Father God, that as I decrease, Father God, may you increase, Father God. Anoint thy lips, Father God. Anoint thy word, Father God, Jesus. And I just pray, Father God, that your word, Father God, it comes out with clarity, Father God, that it falls on fertile soil. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So today is a prayer service, and I will be talking about prayer today. And as we turn our Bibles to Psalms 17. Give you a quick little background on what this psalm is about. It's about um, King David. You see, and King David in this moment, he is trying to protest his innocence to God. Because he's going through some things and he doesn't know why, what it is or why it is that he's going through it. You see, and the word of God reads like this. It says, hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have proposed that my mouth shall not, tra not transgress. So since I already prayed in, I want to get to the word of God. You see, there's two ways that... Um, suffer under the heavy hand of God's anger because of unconfessed sins. You see, and I want to get to something. The word suffer, the word suffer in the Webster Dictionary means to allow with especially by reason of indifference. And the word anger, it means a strong feeling of displeasure. So if we put it to you like this, it says, sometimes we allow especially by reason to suffer under the heavy hand of God's displeasure because of unconfessed sins. So you see, David was going through some problems. David was going through some situations that he didn't know if it was because of unconfessed sins. And I want to let you know this morning, have this, this evening, that have you, when you go into your prayer closet, do you confess your sins? Or is there some things that you want to keep in the back burner? Are there some things that you forget that you keep in the closet with your skeletons? You see, sometimes we want to keep on going because we feel like God is taking us somewhere. But you, but you begin to feel like you're just going in circles, that you're going in circles. Because you're allowing what's precious become familiar. You're just coming to God when you want something. You're not giving him the time that you want to give him, that he wants from you. He wants you to give him intimacy. He wants you to give him your heart. You see, you're letting business become the, as usual. You're just coming to him because it's something of normal to you. No, God wants your time. God wants your dedication. God wants your heart. You see, but then again, God also shows a special concern for people who experience undeserved suffering, even though he allows the trouble to come. For reasons that may be never known in this life. You see, sometimes God will just allow you to go through some things. Because he knows you're strong. You see, 2 Timothy 2.3 says, see, For we are called to, be, uh, to endure hardship like a good soldier. And sometimes God will make you or allow you to go through some hardship. Because there's somebody that's watching you. There's somebody that's looking at you. And there's somebody that sees, you know what, I want to be as strong is that person. 
Because if he can make through it, then I can go through it. You see, and there's three points that I want to make from the scripture. My first point is a plea for vindication. And the word pleas to us a request in an urgent manner. And vindication means an act of clearing of blame or of suspicion. You see in Isaiah 54, 17, it says, There's no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You see, a plea for vindication to be free from anything, from anybody saying anything. We got to live above reproach when we come to God. You see, you got to be blameless. You see, when you come to God, are you coming to God with a pure heart? Or like I said, are you holding something in the back burner that you're not allowing God to move within your heart the way that he needs to move? You see, there is no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. You're your biggest weapon sometimes. You see, your vindication comes. You're, you're, you're making this plea. You're, you're making this request. You want God to, to look at you in a blameless and an unsuspicious manner. But when you're coming to him, you're, you're, you're not coming blameless. You're coming because You're coming because, I mean, the, the cover got on, got taken off, you know. You see, but then again, I want uh, I want to go to my second point. My second point is the acknowledgement of God's testing, is to recognize the testing of God. And First Corinthians ten thirteen says, God is faithful, and He will not let you be tested beyond His strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure. You see, we got to acknowledge what God is doing within us sometimes. Sometimes we're so eager to complain. We're so eager to backbite. We're so eager to buck and kick because we're going through a stretching season. Because we're going through a season of expansion. But you see, sometimes you say, God, give it to me. God, give it to me. Fill my plate up. But then again, when God fills up your plate and puts it on your table, you say, no, God, that's too much. You see, but he will never give you what you can't handle. He will never give you a shoe too big for you to put on. Of course, he's going to get, he's going to allow you through, to go through some testings. He's going to allow you to go through some troubles, through some tribulations. But you got to know that it's because it's a testing. And he knows that you can do it. But you got to know that you can do it within yourself also. And for my last point, it's a plea for God's mercy. And in Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He who covers his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You see, God's mercy isn't forever. God's mercy is something that you got to keep on working towards. You see, like I said in the beginning, it says, do not keep yourself under the heavy hand of God's anger because of unconfessed sin. And this is where I got my confirmation. It says, he who covers his sins will not prosper. You see, we got to come to God with a humble heart, with an open heart. Otherwise, why did he die on the cross for us? For you to keep holding on to what you're holding on to when he's trying to do much more for you? When he wants you to be that pastor, that evangelist, that wife, that mother. But you're so eager to hold on to that sin because you feel ashamed. You feel like God is not going to forgive you. God shed his blood on the cross of Calvary so he could give it all to him. You see, and me, I want to get into some prayer tonight. And um, as, as, as the worship cults we begin to play and I come to a closing. And um, my closing scripture is Ephesians 6, 18. And it says, pray in the spirit at all times. 
And on every occasion, stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers. You see, the spirit of God is here right now. And his presence is beautiful. You see, but you got to pray in the spirit. You can't let what's precious become natural. You can't let what saved you, what gave you purpose, be taken from you because of something that you feel ashamed of, that you should be given to God. Pray in the spirit all the time. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. Drop down to your knees and let him know that he is yours and, and that you are his. Be persistent. Be persistent in your prayers. Know what you're praying for and have authority for what you're praying for. But see, and as we stand this evening, I just want you guys, as, as you guys begin to find a place in these altars, that you guys be persistent. Be in the spirit. Do not let what's precious become familiar. God wants you. God wants you to give it all to him. Do not be ashamed of what God wants you to, wants to free you from. He wants to free you from all. He wants to do something amazing within your life. But you just got to remove all that access so he can move within your life. Be persistent. And as these altars are open, find your place in prayers.